let me go with um, a verse from Surah Al-Mu'minun that talks about embryology. And uh, the Quran is talking about uh, the creation of the human being. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد خلقنا الإنسان من سلالة من صين ثم جعلناه نطفة في قرار مكين ثم خلقنا النطفة علقة فخلقنا العلقة مضغة فخلقنا المضغة عظاما فكسونا العظام لحما ثم أنشأناه خلقا آخر فتبارك الله أحسن الخالقين want to translate this bit by bit it starts off ولقد خلقنا الإنسان من سلالة من صين we have created the human being from a product of wet earth. That is the sort of classical translation, a, a slab of clay or mud. As you know, interestingly enough, um, the, the Arabic word sulala can also mean a lineage, an evolution uh, from the earth. So this verse alone uh, it can, can be used as very strong grounds to say the Quran uh, can support or can be interpreted to support the concept of a gradual evolution. But no matter, because that's, that's questionable. So we have made him from a drop of seed in a secure place, that secure place being the womb of the mother. Then we created this drop of seed into a term that the Quran says, alaqa. And uh, the alaqa is um, translated as a clot of blood, but what it means in Arabic is something which hangs, something which hangs down. So this here is a newly fertilized uh, egg implanted in the uterus, and within a few days, it becomes a little what's called embryonic disc with a, with a uh, yolk sac and an embryonic sac. And from a larger view, this is the lining of the uterus, and this is the tiny zygote hanging. Thank you. Okay. This is the tiny zygote hanging from the lining of the uterus. Okay, um, And the zygote develops in various stages that scientists have named. And so that hanging thing would be a alaqa, something which hangs. Then the Quran says we have created the alaqa into a mudra. Mudra is translated by the commentators as a lump, but what it literally means is something which has been chewed. And if you look at the embryo, at a two to three week period, you notice that it actually looks like a piece of gum with little teeth marks on it. Okay, this is exactly what a piece of gum would look like if it came out of your mouth. And so this is a mudra, something which has been chewed. And these little lumps are called the somites. And at this stage, this is a somite embryo. There's no better word in Arabic to have described that appearance than the term mudra, something which has been chewed up. And these somites, the teeth marks that you saw on that, uh, on that embryo, become the bones and the muscles. And so the Quran says, ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُّطْفَةَ عَلَقَةً we, put, we made this seed into a alaqa, something which hangs, which is that zygote with the yolk sac that you saw. Then we made the alaqa a mudra. That's that chewed up appearance of the somite embryo. Then we made the mudra عظاماً فكسونا العظام الأحمد. Then we made the mudra into bones, and these bones were covered with flesh. And when you read embryology, you find that these somites become something called sarcomeres that give rise to bone and to muscle. At that stage, who here has taken some embryology? Anybody? Okay. Are the physicians in the crowd? All right, very good. So what's the difference between the human embryo and, say, a fish embryo at the four-week stage? The answer is no difference. Because all vertebrate embryos go through these exact same stages. And if you were to take a human embryo and a fish embryo at the four-week stage, they look like these somites, and you can't tell them apart. In fact, the human embryo even has gills. So after this stage where the, the vertebration, us differentiating ourselves into vertebrates, like fish, which are vertebrates, like reptiles, which are vertebrates, like other mammals, which are vertebrates, and that is the stage of the somites, we then lose our gills and become differentiated into a human embryo. And at about six to eight weeks, the embryo becomes clearly human at that point. And so the Quran says after this stage of 
of bones and flesh, then we made him a different being. At that point, we break off from the rest of the vertebrates and become a different thing, which is a human embryo. Glory be to Allah, the best of the creators. So I look at this verse and I say, it would be inconceivable to me that a man who could not read or write and lived in a tent in the middle of the nomadic desert in an entirely uncivilized place could have made this description. And so, to me, this would be an element of proof. And in fact, some Christian embryologists, a very famous professor of embryology named R.L. Moore, wrote in the introduction to his textbook that the Quran has an amazing depiction of embryology that cannot be the product of a liar fabrication. And that was in, in his preface to an embryology book that we studied in medical school.